I certainly appreciate your time, and I'll try not to waste it. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday, September 21st. Now, as most of you know, we like to look at OTC and penny stocks that are going to make us money, basically. I'm looking for stocks that have potential. Now, when I say OTC and penny stocks, I'm not being redundant. A penny stock is any stock under $5. Yeah, there's a ton of those on the OTC, but there's also a ton of those on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, and all of them qualify as penny stocks, so we could easily be looking at any of those type of stocks. Now, when I say potential, I mean I'm looking for stocks that may have chart setups, or I'm looking for stocks that have a lot of buzz online, or they just have good, juicy news. Now, folks, I can't tell you how much news I look at. I'm in it all day, from before the bell, through the day, and after the bell. I am constantly monitoring the news because it's constantly coming out. As soon as a good piece of news comes out, the stock is going to run. It's not going to wait until the next day just because it came out at noon. It will start running at noon. Now, this is news I've personally looked at over the last four days, I believe it is. That is juicy stuff. I know for a fact there are at least a dozen acquisitions in there, uh, half a dozen joint ventures. I mean, that is great news. There's no financial reports. There's no public offerings. These are events, the things you want to find when you're going through the news. So if you don't have time, there's a cheetah list for you right there. I really ought to charge for it. <laughs> All right, we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is where I do all my research on an OTC stock. At least this is where I start. If I can't find what I'm looking for, then I'll go out into the big internet and go searching for it. But the reason I like this site so much is it's the only site I know of on the entire internet that is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. I cannot tell you how much time and hassle that saves me. Folks, come here. Look for what you're looking for. If you can't find it, then go out there. But most of the time, you're going to get what you're looking for here. This makes it real easy to do research. So let's take a look at how our day finished on the OTC market. It was not a good day, folks. It was a bad day. I'm not going to pull any punches. I do believe this is the second worst day of the year for the OTC market. We had a day just a little bit lower in July, and back in October, we were even worse. But between all those dates, we've been up, up, up. So this was a horrible day for the OTC market. Our dollar volume is at a crucial 1.2 billion. This is very, very low. I think this is a 52 week low for us. We've been here twice so far this month. Our share volume, oh my God, weren't we just at 11.12 billion? We're like 40% down, 6.4 billion. That's anemic folks. You can't even get out of bed with this many shares. So I'm surprised the market had any life today. Share trades were under 250, which is our floor, supposedly. But we've been hanging around 250 for a long time, and now we're getting even less than that. So it was a pretty sad day on the OTC market. Now, me, I like to follow the trades. That is one of my primary ways of finding stocks that are running. There is a page right here on the OTC market that I come to, current market. You come over here, folks. I know my big head's in the way, so I'll screw this up. <laughs> screw. Scroll. It's here in the advancers. Hit this all button right there, and then hit the more. That'll give you the biggest gainers on the entire market. And I love that column right there, trades. This tells me how many trades a company has had. And I can see who has a lot of activity, who has a lot of people around it, who has a stronger chance of making me some money. And this is where I was looking all day today, and there weren't a lot of big runners. These are not big numbers, folks. 43, 59, those are not big numbers. That's an average trade day for a stock that's doing something. We're looking for triple digits. We're starting to get a little big high. As a matter of fact, this is going to be the very first stock we look at. Matter of fact, let's just jump into it right now. <laughs> I can just see most of your faces right now. You're going, dude, what's up? You said we were going to be looking at stocks under $5. That is not even close to under 5 bucks. You got me. You're right. But to be completely honest, this is not the stock we're going to be looking at. It's just the first step in the journey to get there. This is ticker IPOF, Social Capital, Hito Sophia, Holdings Core, the 6th. God, they need a new name. What this is, it is a SPAC on the New York Stock Exchange. 
Now, if you're not familiar with what a SPAC is, that's an acronym. It stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Company. This is an investment tool. A bunch of investors get together, put together a shell company, has no business, basically all they own is the ticker. And they put it on the major exchange and they're looking to make an acquisition or a deal. And they're normally looking for a private company that wants to go public. Now, when they come out of the market, we have no idea what company they're going to get. It's all speculation and hope. And you can buy into that hope at $10 a share. And until they actually make a deal, consummate it and close it, the stock is only worth $10. Now, you may see the price go up and have to pay more for one of their shares, or the price could fall and you pay less, but it's only worth $10. Now, normally when you get into a SPAC, you buy units. A unit is a package deal. You get one share and normally one warrant. It could be a half a warrant, could be a third of a warrant. Now the price of the stock is never worth more than 10, but the warrant can go anywhere. You know, it's alive. It can fall, it can rise, it can do anything. And that's what happened today. The warrant took off. There was news that came out today that affected the company in a big way and the investors. Now I'm gonna surprise you here. Most people do not know this. A SPAC has a time limit in which they have to consummate a deal, normally between 18 and 24 months. If they do not close a deal within that amount of time, are you ready to be blown right out of your socks? Investors get their money back. I am not kidding, folks. You absolutely get all your money back, but just a little bit, just a real small amount, which is negligible really that's just to cover interest and bank fees but outside of that the investors get their money back and that's what happened today news came out matter of fact let's just take a look at this the 8k came out really late today as i told you i follow trades over there on the otc market i follow the trades and i'm looking at it all day and i came over there at around 2 30 in the afternoon and boom this warrant was running, and when I seen it, it was at 378% gains. And right now, I think it's at 171% gains. But I'm a little confused about it. I really am. Read this 8K with me and see what you think. Down here, they tell us that on September 20th, 2022, Social Capital announced that it would not complete its initial business combination by October 14th, the deadline for the company to complete its initial business combination. Due to the company not completing a business combination by October 14th, 2022, the company will as promptly as possible, but not more than 10 days after October 14th, start redeeming all of their outstanding Class A ordinary shares. Now, I'm going to paraphrase all the rest of this. There is going to be over $1 billion in the trust fund. They're going to take out about $100,000 to pay their interest and their bank fees. And that $1.1 billion goes back to all the investors per share. It's going to come back on a pro rate range. Now, here's the big thing that's strange. This is the big thing that's strange here. There will be no redemption rights or liquidating distributions with respect to the company's warrants, which will expire worthless upon the liquidation of the company. So they are liquidating by October 17th. That's what it says here. The redemption is expected to be completed October 17th. And they're telling us that the warrant is going to be worthless. Well, over here, it ran today. And this is strange. Warrants are on the same market as a stock. This is on the pink. I don't know what the heck it's doing out here on the OTC. It should be on the New York Stock Exchange, but there it is. She finished the day at 0 .0038 with 171% gains. Do they actually show us how many there are of these? No, I don't know how many warrants there are. But she was running big time today against the news. I might have expected the stock to move because people are going to get their money back. But really all that's happening is, is they're going to divide that down and you're probably going to get nine dollars and 89 cents for every share that you own so it really isn't a money maker no they're going out of business <laughs> that they're going out of business before they went into business and they're just giving all the money back and for some reason people think this is a big deal and the warrant was running when it's gonna become worthless in just a couple of weeks unbelievable let's go take a look at that chart
As always, we're going to be doing all of our charting on my free trading platform. This is Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim, these are my viewers. <laughs> if you like Thinkorswim, just go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for a free account, and they'll hook the two of you up. And as long as you keep your account open, you can use TOS anytime you like. So what we've got here are two charts. We just noticed that this warrant was on the OTC pink tier. I told you it's supposed to be on the New York Stock Exchange. Well, it was yesterday, but today, for whatever reason, it is on the pink. Now, we can see that six months ago, that warrant was at $2.11, and yesterday, yesterday she fell down here to triple zero two. But look at this. Oh, wow, what a drop. She was at $0.61.62 earlier yesterday morning. Fell all the way down to that triple zero two. Folks, that is over 300,000% drop. 300,000. Today's low bubble, we had triple zero three. Look at the high bubble, double zero nine. That is a 3,000% gain. And it fell down here. It says we've closed the day at double zero three eight. Well, from this low down here, you know, there's triple zero two, there's triple zero three. Well, that is over a thousand percent jump. But they just told us over there at the OTC market it was 171%. So I'm not sure where they're getting their math here because that looks like a huge, giant gain to me. The technicals all look like they're pulling down right now. But I don't know, folks. First off, this shouldn't have run. It's a warrant. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. When a major exchange company has news, the warrant normally responds to it. And if you see a nice jump in the company, you'll normally see a giant jump in the warrants. Warrants move fast and they're cheap. They're normally always penny stocks, so they're easier to get into. Even though the major exchange stock could be $20, $40, $10, $8, you're going to find their warrants are penny stocks and they move faster than the stock itself. So I love to watch warrants, but this just doesn't make any sense. If they're going to be worthless, what is it? October 17th, why would anybody play it? Unless it's insiders. I have no idea, folks. Sometimes gains don't make sense. I would not advise getting into this. Unless you're a day trader and you see some volume on this thing and it starts doing something crazy, fine. Yeah, get into it for a day. But remember what's going to happen after October 17th. Warrants are going to expire worthless. <sighs> right? All right, let's go take a look at the next stock that isn't going to go worthless. We've got another stock here that has just had big news and is also a shell company. This is ticker GTVI, Joe Way Health Industries. Now, being a shell company is not necessarily a bad thing. As a matter of fact, it's an opportunity waiting to happen. Every shell company wants to be making money. And the only way you're going to do that is to either make an acquisition, a merger, a reverse merger. you got to get another business to come in normally. So we're looking for these sort of things to occur. And today, opportunity came a-knocking for GTVI. She finished the day at about 34 cents with almost 36% gains. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She does have a verified transfer agent, but we do not yet see a verified profile. We want to see that. Now, they are a shell company, as I said. They've been a shell company for about two years now, and they did have a change of control not too long ago. So they are primed to answer the door for opportunity. What was the relative volume today around the company? If I can get it to work. Oh my goodness, look at that, folks. Normally doing 615 shares a day. That isn't under the radar. That's off the radar. And today she did just under a half a million shares. Not a ton, but that's a long ways from 615. And you're going to like the share count. We have an absolute teeny weeny tiny float. 1.5 million. And when you put this alongside the news today, I see a big runner coming. What are our financials? Well, Zip, she's a shell company, so she's not making anything. She was a long time ago, but right now, nothing coming in. Disclosures, we got any information over here? Well, their latest 10Q came out, which is nice. They're a pink they're not giving us disclosures. They're giving us 10Ks and 10Qs, which means they should be having a CPA look at those. But outside of that, we really don't have anything going on here. So jumping on over to the news, we have nothing. 
We got nothing here. So how did I know anything was going on with this? Well, believe it or not, the news was on another company's page. Over here at MLYCF, Multi-Metal Division LTD, they had the news. Right here, International Kumo Mining Corporation signs term sheet to merge with U.S. public traded company. And this is the news. So they tell us over here that Multi-Metal Development, ticker MLYCF, and its subsidiary, International Kumo Mining Corporation, known as ICMC, are pleased to announce that ICMC has signed a non-binding term sheet to merge with a U.S. shell corporation, namely Joe Way Health Industries, ticker GTVI. Upon completion of the merger, Joe Way's name will be changed to International Kumo Mining Corporation, no ticker given yet, and it will become the operating entity for the Kumo project, which is the world's largest primary molybdenum denim deposit and the largest silver in one of the top 10 copper deposits in the U.S. The purpose of this merger is to access U.S. capital markets. ICMC's assets will be valued at about $40 million for the purposes of the merger. The transaction will involve no cash. Current owners of GTVI will retain about 10%, with ICMC holding the other 90%. The transaction is a first step towards uplisting the company to a major exchange. And there is also a lockup, which is really reassuring. A lockup is where the management cannot sell their shares for a certain amount of time. So you don't have to worry about them pouring a bunch of them on the market and pulling the price down. They tell us here that they have a lockup for 18 months. They can't sell their shares or three months after we uplist, whichever comes first. Now, what I do find interesting, you come on over here to Multi Meadows page, we can see their prices uh, just a little over a penny and a half, where GTVI's is at 33. Well, this company is a shell company, GTVI. Now, I realize they just went up today, but only 35%. This company over here also went up today about 10%, but they're super duper low and they're making money, aren't they? Let's take a look at their financials. Who? maybe not. They got nothing going on here. Quarterly? No, they're not making any money either. So I'm having a hard time seeing where they come up with their 40 million. Now I'm not quite sure if that Kumo project is not a part of this. Maybe it's something off on the side that they're bringing in because what this actually looks like is a spin out but there's not going to be any uh, dividends as far as I can see. I mean, they're taking a subsidiary that they own and giving it its own ticker, and they're going to try to then push it up to the NASDAQ. So we do have a merger going on here. GTVI got most of the joy, and they're going to have the new business. Let's go see how big the jump was on this. I did see it bigger today. We're now taking a look at GTVI. That is a six month, four hour chart, though it doesn't look like it. We should be getting roughly 145 days of trade in six months. I think we're lucky if we've got 20 days here. We got a low bubble that was back in June of about two and a half cents. And today we had our high bubble of 62 cents. Now, just to show you how seldom this is trading, our last three days, it traded the day, it traded yesterday, but this third day, that's five weeks ago. That's August 15th, but she's been tearing it up from five cents. She's just been climbing ever since then. Our technicals are really strong. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is pointing up and climbing, just like the MACD. These two are a lot alike. The percentage price oscillator works with the percentage of the price, where the MACD works with the whole price. RSI is over 60 and still climbing, and our ADX, our trend continuation oscillator, shows that the trend is going the same direction. As long as this doesn't change direction, that means this isn't changing direction. So everything looks real good, and our volume is strong these last two days. Looking at 20-day, one-hour view. All right, it's only given us three days here, maybe four days. We had a low four days ago of about eight and a half cents. So you got about eh, 700, 600% gains over these last few days. She hit this high real early. She hit that at 10 a.m. folks, 10 a.m. Our technicals look like they're pulling back right now, though the RSI is starting to push back up. 
Now, I want to take a look at that high bubble down at the five-minute, five-day view. All right, I said it hit it early. It hit it at uh, 10.15. All right, 10.15. Now, I always say, if you're in a strong run in the morning from the bell, you might want to consider getting out at 10. 10, 10.05 is when the market takes a hesitation, not every single stock, but most of them. And you don't know what it's going to do after that. Why take the chance? If you had a good morning run for 20, 30 minutes, get out, take that gain, and be happy. Here we had a dip. She tried to come back up, fell down to our 20, came across, broke the 20, and has fallen. And now it looks like she's coming back up to the 20 again. Our technicals actually show a recovery right now. We've got the uh, PPO starting to turn up. We don't see much of a turn here. It is underneath the pink. We definitely want to get that on top of the pink. But our MACD shows we are about ready to start pushing back up again, though our RSI is a little tempted. Our ADX, well, that is showing we had a trend change, but I can't tell that it's actually wanting to go up. So right now, the oscillators are about 50-50. They're not giving us a lot of information. What I do see here is we got the new 50-day SMA that has just come into the picture. It fell under it, and I have this belief that when a new SMA comes onto a chart, the price wants to go to it. For whatever reason, the price just wants to go to it. It really doesn't matter where that SMA is, down or up. It just goes there. So it happened to be up when it came into the picture. Boom, it came back up, and it looks like it's trying to stay up there too, at least from this vantage point. I keep my eye on GTVI. I'm not much of a mining man, but they've got, I don't even know what that first thing, that mineral was that they were talking about, but I know what silver is and I know what copper is. And these are some of the biggest mining operations in America. I think they're over in Boise, Idaho. So whatever is going on here, you may want to keep your eye on GTVI for some more bounces and gains. Last stock we're going to look at is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker CPTN, Septon Inc. Now, Septon had some big, interesting news come out today that's definitely going to help them and got the investors excited. She finished the day at $2.09 with just about 18% gains, though earlier today she was closer to 75 80%. So, what is Septon doing? Septon is a Silicon Valley innovator of LiDAR-based solutions for automotive, smart city, smart spaces, smart industrial applications. LiDAR is the equipment that helps machines see the physical world. This is how cars can drive themselves. They're probably going to put it on boats and airplanes, maybe even your lawnmower. They may make a robot to walk your dog. It's going to have LiDAR in it. LiDAR is going to be huge. They go on to tell us that with its patented LiDAR technology, Septon aims to take LiDAR mainstream and achieve a balanced approach to performance, cost, and reliability, while enabling scalable and intelligent 3D perception solutions across industries. Septon has been awarded a significant ADAS LiDAR Series Production Award with the Cotio on the General Motors business. Septon is also engaged with all other top 10 global OEMs, that is original equipment manufacturers. They go on to tell us that Septon is headquartered in San Jose, California and has a center of excellence in Troy, Michigan. They also have a presence in Germany, Canada, Japan, India, and China to serve a fast-growing global customer base. So what was the relative volume around this company's big news today? Pretty big. She jumped from three quarter million to over 31 million. So we're looking at about 35 times her normal volume. Share structure, cross our fingers for a low float. Oh, right, I did have to go look this one up. Trick in this, you can't find it here. You go out to Google, just don't take the first number you find. You have no clue what date that is from. I always look for two or three sites that agree on one number, and I found roughly 40 million. So if that be it, 40 million is not a bad float for a NASDAQ stock. Financials, well, you expect the NASDAQ stock to be making money, but we see nothing here annually. Thank God they're doing something quarterly. Now, remembering to bring down those three zeros behind these numbers, first quarter, they did $1.4 million, second quarter, 2.5. But they're not keeping a lot of that money. 
They got to keep a quarter million the first quarter, but they're down a half a million the second quarter. So I'm really hoping and believing that the news that came out today is going to help them in this fashion in a big way. Disclosures. Looking for anything new over here in 8K? Nope, we got nothing for a couple weeks. So let's just jump on over to that news. So this is the news we are looking at today. Septon adds LiDAR digital twin to NVIDIA Drive Sim, advancing the development of safe autonomous driving technology. I know that doesn't make any sense at all. So let me break this down for you folks. Now I'll try to put this in a nutshell for you. It really isn't that complicated. They just use words that make it sound complicated. There's lots of information here. You can come over here and read it. But what you see here in the picture, this is a simulator that NVIDIA has created so that companies can test different types of LiDAR to see which one's going to work best for them. But the only way you can test a LiDAR is for the company to upload a mode, a drive, if you will, of their LiDAR. And that's what Septon has done. They have uploaded a simulation of their LiDAR. And then as you see here, you get to experiment with it first. So companies can try different companies' LiDARs under different simulations rather than having to find real life simulations to practice in. So it's actually a shopping tool. It's going to help lots of companies in the world with whatever they're going to use LiDAR for to see if this LiDAR product is the one that's going to work for them. I think it's a great selling tool. I think it is really going to help them out. I'm not as technical as a lot of people, but I could see the value of this if I was in business. So I think this is going to be hot, not just here recently, but I'm looking down the road, folks. I think CE CPTN is going to be a hot company. LiDAR is going to be everywhere and everything, probably more things than we really wanted in. And I expect this company to do well. Let's go take a look at that chart now. That is a six month, four hour chart for CPTN. We got a high bubble six months ago of $80.16 and a low of 89 cents. Now that's not her normal high. That was very short lived. It was a poke in one day. Looks like she hangs around at her high of about $33, which isn't bad at all. Now I know that looks like nothing is going on, but when you zoom in on it, you can see there's activity going on. And today we had a lot of volume and a big push. She got over all of the SMAs and is up high right now above all of them. Technicals are very strong. PPO, MACD, and ADX are in grand shape. RSI does have a pullback as you would expect because the RSI is nothing more than these bars put into a line. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Well, she's doing good. She got up on top of that 200 about 18 days ago and refuses to come down, which is a nice thing to see. She's been bouncing across that all the way until today. She got a good strong push, jumped from about $1.75 to $2.59. Like I said, about 75, 80% gains, and then it dropped. And the technicals are showing strength, but they do show that drop without a doubt. Five day, five minute. Not a whole lot going on for the last four days. I'm going to presume the news came out late in the day because this didn't start moving until about 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And how long did it run? That ran for less than an hour. So in an hour, it made its full run and then came all the way back down. And I'm going to grab my Fibonacci. I'm going to poke the bottom of the run here and the top of the run right there. And we can see right here grabbing my other line, which is white. I'm going to put it right on top of that 50% right there. They got 50%. That's where I draw my lines. I like to put one at the bottom of the top and then just split it. And I want to see if the price ended the day above the 50% mark, which we did not. We not only fell below the 50, we have fallen below the next algorithm support resistance that they give us. You can definitely use these to know when to get in and out of the stock. So she is down right now. I'm going to get rid of these lines so we can see that a wee bit clearer. So when it falls under that 50% mark, I always get the feeling it's going to keep coming down. So it could very well come right back down to that 200. I would not be surprised at all. She seems very comfortable hanging right next to that. 
However, the news is big news. It's going to affect their revenues. Now, it may not affect them tomorrow or the next day, but putting a shopper's tool out there for big corporations to be able to shop with, I think that is going to be a big leap for them. So honestly, I am looking at CPTN down the road, a long hold. I think this is a great company with technology that is just going to become uh, everywhere. It's just going to be everywhere in everything. And I think this company is going to be there with all the other companies. I don't think it's going to get booted out. So CPTN, I like it for a long hold. And curiously enough, it could be a good short hold as well. So there you go. Three interesting stocks. You got a merger going on there. You've got a new selling tool. And the third one, IPOFW, let's just call that a nice lesson learned. We seen that warrant running day, but it was running on bad news. So what does that tell us? Just because something is climbing doesn't mean you should automatically assume everything's righteous. Go do your DD. Make sure that the stock you're getting into is going to be there tomorrow. IPOFW is going bye-bye while the other two are hanging around. And don't forget, go over that news I gave you. There's lots of acquisitions in there, lots of joint ventures. I can't cover all the stocks. I leave lots of DD for you. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.